and today I'm gonna show you how to make an ombre blend and I'm gonna be making these into little discs to turn into beads but you can use this method for anything that you want to have a nice gradient. So the things you're gonna need is you're gonna need two colors, you're gonna need white and any other color that you want. Um, the more contrast, so the darker from white that you get, the better results you're gonna have with the ombre because you're gonna be able to see a dark pink leading up to white. You're also gonna need something to poke a hole with. I just have this little dotting tool. You can use a thumbtack, a toothpick, needle tool, whatever you have and all to poke the hole. And you're gonna need something to cut with. I have this clay cutter, but you can use a knife. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll these two balls into coils. So I'm gonna start with my white. I always like to start with my lighter color because sometimes darker colors can transfer onto your fingers. So to roll my coil, I'm gonna do a tapered coil, which means it's gonna be thick on one side and thin on the other. And to do that, I like to start by just rolling one side of the ball. I'm just working on some parchment paper so that my project doesn't stick to my work surface and my work surface is protected. So I've got it started. It's kind of a cone shape now. And then I'm just gonna continue to roll. And I'm working my fingers from one end from left to right. and putting a little bit more pressure as I get to the right. So from left to right, putting a little bit more pressure as I get down to this point, because again, I want it to go from thick to thin. Once you have a coil that is about um, two or three inches, it really just depends on how big you want your beads to be. So my bead is going to be um, about the size of a dime with this diameter. If you want your beads to be thicker, like the size of a quarter, you would want to do a thicker coil all along. And we're going to do that to our pink as well. I'll keep this one here for reference. So I'm just gonna take my finger and start on the right hand side. So I'm not rolling this side at all yet. I'm gonna get that nice taper. So it's kind of like a cone shape. And then I can continue to roll all along my coil. rolling my fingers down to the right, starting from the left, rolling my finger down. Once it gets longer, you can add more fingers, you can go a little bit faster. You can roll in between your hands like this, but what I find is I get um, the indents from my fingers quite a bit when doing that. So I like to just do a roll. When you're rolling your coils, if you just do short little rolls, you're gonna flatten it out. So you need to make sure that you are rolling over a distance so that you're rolling all the way around your coil to make it nice and even. You just wanna make sure that you're rolling this side to match the thickness that you have on this, on your white one, 
or whichever one you rolled first. And you want your length to match with your previous coil as well. Okay, I think that's about good. I am gonna cut off a little bit of this white because I do think my white was portion was just slightly larger and you can see it here that it was. Okay, so now that you have two coils that look pretty, pretty much the same here, what you wanna do is you wanna flip one around so that you have the thick end opposite each other. So thick end here, thick end here. And that is gonna be our ombre because then we're gonna have more pink at this end and more white at this end. If you want an all pink and an all white, just slide your coil down just very slightly so that you have a space where you have all pink and all white. And I'm just gonna kind of gently pinch those together so they don't wiggle on me when I am cutting. Okay, so you can use a knife for this, but I like these tools, kind of like a ruler with a blade on the end. Make sure it's clean. I use a paper towel in between and I just wipe it down. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut my portions. So you can take a ruler if you would like to make sure that all your beads are even or you can eyeball it. I'll show you the ruler method first. Or if I line my coil up against the ruler, if I wanted to do a quarter of an inch for each one, I could cut right at a quarter inch for each one. Probably just mark it and then cut because it'll be easier. Where did I go? That's four. Or you can just eyeball these sections. So if you want to use a ruler, go for it. I'm cutting about quarter inch sections. But what I like to do is I can just eyeball the sections to be about the right width. Okay, so I'm keeping all of these in order and that's intentional. Sorry, my paper keeps sliding around on me. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix the polymer clay and mixing polymer clay is pretty simple. You can also do um, a marble effect this way, but so we have our white. So I'm just gonna roll the white into a ball. You can roll it on your mat up to you how you roll it into a ball. Right now, I'm not concerned so much about that. But to mix, I'm gonna kind of gently separate. This one didn't cut all the way through. So I had my ruler there. So as you can see, I have just a teeny tiny bit of pink and mostly white. I'm gonna go ahead and mix those together. And you can just fold it in and right now you're gonna see white but like magic that pink will come to the surface the more you mix and you just want to keep mixing until these are all one solid color my white is really soft white polymer clay tends to be really really soft and I think it's just because it doesn't have any additional 
pigments because pigments tend to be um, powder and the more powder that you add the denser your clay will be if your clay is too mushy you can leave it on some paper overnight and some of the oil will leach out so I'd say that one's pretty good it's all one solid color I'm gonna set that one next to my white and you're just gonna go down the line sure it's cut all the way through. This one has more pink. And mix them in. You just want to keep them in order. You will be able to see the order pretty clearly, um, but I find that keeping them in order initially will make it so that I don't accidentally put one out of place. So just mix that clay in. You may see a little bit of sparkle occasionally in mine. My white does have some iridescent glitter in there. You can use glitters as add-ons as long as it is a metal-based glitter and not a plastic-based glitter because plastic will melt in your oven. Most glitters are made with aluminum or some kind of other metal. Some of them are coated in plastic, but most glitters are okay in the oven. Even some of the plastic ones won't melt, but better safe than sorry. So this one is slightly darker than the last. And then it'll get darker and darker and darker and darker until we get all the way down to the pink. So I'm going to go ahead and do a time lapse of me mixing these colors and then I'll be back to show you how to make the jewelry. have been mixed you can see that it goes from light to dark dark to light so now what I want to do is I want to cut each one of my pieces in half so that I get two beads if you're working with a larger quantity you may be able to get larger pour larger beads you could also just turn these into beads as is I'm doing little flat circles so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right in half and so for each bead I'm actually going to show you with the darker ones because I think I, you can see it a little bit better cut it in half again you can use a knife you could even just pull them apart for portion so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that into a ball both halves into a ball. Okay, once you have them into a ball, you're just going to take your thumb and you're going to smush them down. You can also pinch them between your fingers, whatever works best for you. But the goal is to get a disc just like this kind of shape it make it nice and round you could also use a cookie cutter if you have one and then I'm going to put it on a piece of um, a blind baking sheet just like so and I'm gonna pop a little hole in that using the tool that I showed before. What am I on? There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tool and I'm just going to pop a little hole right in that. And I like to do it on the baking sheet that I'm going to be using 
um, so that I can just flip it over, clean it up, and be done. Okay, you can also press it down onto the cookie sheet that you're gonna be using. I just use parchment paper. You don't have to use parchment paper, but I do find that polymer can stick to a aluminum sheet. I like to keep them in order. So I'm gonna go ahead and go from dark to light. Press down. You just wanna make sure that all your beads are the same circumference. So they're the same size. The thickness doesn't matter as much as making sure they are all the same size. So when I layer them on top of each other, they're going to fit. This one can be a little bit thinner. You can just set them together if you want see that they are the same size or about the same size. If you're using a cookie cutter, they will be the same size. Always make sure it's flat and then put your little hole in there. Right in the center. I just put it in and then I wiggle it around to make my hole bigger. If you're using a toothpick, just insert, wiggle it around to make your hole larger. You want it large enough for whatever cord you're going to be putting through there to pass through. If there's any fingerprints, you also want to smooth those away so that you don't see your little fingerprint marks. And you're going to do that for all of them. And once we're done, I'll show you how to string them together. we're going to turn this into a necklace but you can use this ombre method for anything you'd like you can make earrings you can make um, use it for sculpture whatever you'd like I just have some embroidery floss here I'm making a longer necklace um, and you can use something that's a little bit more durable like a natural fiber cord like a hemp cord you can use um, chain. You can even make a little section of this and just have it so that you can put it on any color chain. Gold chain would look really nice with these colors. But I'm just using embroidery floss. Embroidery floss is not going to be the most durable for long wear. I will have to change out this embroidery floss after oh, probably like six months or so of wear. Um, it's totally fine to use as long as you know that you're going to be changing it out if you wear this necklace all the time. Okay, so you have to decide which end you want to start with. I'm just going to go ahead and start with the white. I have my embroidery floss hooked up with a needle, but if you're using a stiffer cord, you could just feed it right through. And that's it. You're just going to string all your beads. Now, what if one of your holes is a little bit smaller, like you accidentally didn't make it big enough? Well, you can drill baked polymer clay and you can use either a hand drill or a Dremel to do so. It may crack if you go too fast, um, but you can also sand or take an awl and try and puncture a hole. Um, if you do it gently. If you have any rough edges or um, little rough bits on yours, I recommend sanding them. You can give them a glaze, like a gloss. You can use nail polish, you can use a spray varnish if you want them to be shiny. I actually like them in matte.
You can also add in beads in between these would be really cool. Maybe in like a reverse ombre than what you're doing. So you could go, if you go white to pink with these beads, you could go pink to white with the other beads in between. That would be really interesting. done. I'm just going to tie this one because it's going to be able to slip over my head, but if you're making a smaller necklace um, or a choker length necklace, what you want to do is you want to add your findings on. And of course these are baked. I just followed my package instructions. You should follow your package instructions for baking. I do have a knot in there just in case um, they were to come off, but I don't think it's necessary for how long of a necklace I'm making here. This one's going to be able to just flop right over my neck. All right, double knots. Trim the ends. And there we have it. So this is our necklace. You can see it has a nice gradient in there where it goes from dark pink all the way to white. In this lighting it's kind of hard to see. The sun is not exactly shining here where I am, um, but hold it different ways so maybe you can see a little bit better. If you want more of a significant step, what you can do is you can make your taper a little bit shorter. So um, it, when you're rolling you can make it thinner at one end and thicker at the other and that will give you a more dramatic ombre um, but I really like this very subtle transition here where it is going from white light pink and getting darker and darker as we move along and this is how it would hang kind of in a little U shape so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you give it a try and uh, show me what you make with ombre. We have an Instagram, W-O-A underscore mixed. And we'd love to see what you make. Thanks for watching. Bye.